Hello and welcome back to another episode of Best Bets Week 2. What is going on? I am Matt O'Leary, joined as always by Newsday's NFL pick columnist Joe Maniello. Joe, how's it going? Doing okay, Matt. How are you? Doing all right. Uh, still can't get over the Rodgers news. Uh, uh, unbelievable. Uh, absolutely unbelievable. Shocking. So uh, we'll get into that when we cover... Uh, the Jets Cowboys, but week one recap, uh, a, a rare hot start for me, but I'll take it four and one in week one, two and three uh, for you so far uh, on the year. But here we are again in, in week two. Yeah, uh, it, felt, it wasn't a great week one, not just for Jet fans. It just felt like a weird week for the, you know, and the season goes by so fast. So it's a new week, a new week already. Absolutely. So we'll start with the Giants and the Cardinals. Uh, they are uh, Giants are going on the road after a big time loss on Sunday Night Football. They are six point favorites on the road against the Arizona Cardinals. What's your feel for this game? Yeah, the Giants are uh, my best bet of the week. I think they're going to win this game going away. Everyone is down on them for good reason, forty nothing. But that was a weird game. It was raining. <clears throat> Not making excuses. They got embarrassed, but. The first touchdown was on a block kick, and they had a pick six that felt like a fumble. Barkley, so it was like sixteen nothing. You know, it was just forty nothing to me. Doesn't really. You know, if they lost the game, twenty three nothing. It's the same thing. You know, it's just it's embarrassing because the final score. But I think you know, one week, I and mean, maybe it's a good thing. You know, a lot of teams, a lot of teams sometimes they can take an early season loss like that and turn it around, and make it into a positive. I, I think the Giants are just too well coached and have just a much better roster. The Cardinals, everyone going into the season pretty much seemed like they were the uh, worst team in the league. And so they played well as far as staying in the game last week at Washington, lost 20 to 16. They had six sacks. The Giants gave up seven sacks. That's a little, a little concerning, but I think the Giants will fix everything this week. Um, they got a big Thursday night game at San Francisco a few days after this. So I think they take care of business here. Uh, you, you got a stat that you're going to use later one of your games, but I don't want to steal it. But teams that lose by double digits really bounce back uh, the next week. Uh, in, in week two from week one. I think you'll see a course correction here with the Giants. I think they um, win this game going away. They got it like 34-13. Uh, I think it's going to blow them out. Yeah, I like the Giants a lot, too, for a lot of the same reasons you just listed off. The, obviously, a really tough performance, 40 to nothing. But I think people overreacted to week one and are way, way, way too down uh, on the Giants after that one game. It was ugly. You know, there's no sugarcoating it. As you said, it was a really tough performance in week one at home against a division rival that they've really struggled against. But Brian Dable won Coach of the Year last year for a reason. I think he's going to have this team uh, ready to play. And, you know, Arizona, play, uh, Arizona played tough in week one, but I, I just – I don't see it staying that consistent. And Washington, that yes, they have a, a good defense, but uh, I, I don't really think that they're going to be the same caliber of a team that the, the Giants are expected to be. I think they get back to running the football a little bit more, maybe you know try to make Daniel Jones' life a little bit easier this week after he struggled uh, in week one and got hit a ton and – uh, you know, they had some question marks on their offensive line, but Dallas is no is no slouch. They have a great, great, great pass rush, uh, and I don't think the Cardinals replicate what they did in week one. I'm with you. I think it, they win by uh, two scores. I'm going to say uh, 30 to 10, the Giants win this one. I think they put up a really nice fight on the road. Usually I don't love taking the, the big favorites on the or bigger favorites on the road, but this just feels like a perfect bounce back spot for the Giants to me. Yeah. As for the New York Jets off their win against the Buffalo Bills on Monday night, they head to Dallas, who just put a beat down on the Giants on Sunday night football. Spread is now nine and a half points. The Cowboys are nine and a half point favorites. Do the Jets have enough to keep this one close? I mean, this is a tough one. My first thought was to just lay the points. With, I do not believe in Zach Wilson, and I just don't see you know all this talk about how he's you know he's had such a great off season and this and that like. That, that, that could be all true, but it was all in the idea of him just learning from Rodgers, never actually stepping on the field unless it was garbage time. So this whole idea that they're going to be fine and this and that, I just don't see it, but I'm going to take the points. I just feel like it's too many, and I think the Jets' defense is so good that they can keep this to like a uh, 24-17. To me, the magic number is 17. If the Jets score 17 points, I need to cover the number because I don't see them giving up 30 to the, <clears throat> to the Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys... It's hard to really understand, you know, the offense didn't really have to do anything in the, in the first game against the Giants. They scored two touchdowns on defense and special teams, so it was a weird game. You know, Prescott didn't do anything, but 
seem really happy. So I just don't, I just don't feel comfortable laying that many points. Um, I don't think it'll be a blowout. Now, from a non-picking standpoint, I think the Jets losing 31-3 would be the best thing for them, to be honest with you, because I think they need to get a veteran quarterback in there. Colt McCoy, Carson Wentz, James Winston, somebody, because I don't think Zach Wilson is the guy. And this team has too much talent to waste another year with uh, Wilson running around, not knowing what to do. But hopefully, you know, hopefully he's matured and maybe Hackett can uh, devise a game plan where, you know, they put him in, you know, get him on the you know play action, on the run, do some different things. I mean, the, they, they got to do something different from last year. I mean, the Jets, I feel like Salah is so stubborn, but uh, I'm going to go on a rant here. But uh, <laughs> I'm just going to take the points. I think the defense is too good. And uh, teams usually rally around the backup quarterback that first game. You saw it week one against Buffalo. You know, Josh Allen had a lot to do with the reason why the Jets won that game. But they still won, you know, gritty performance. So us against the world mentality here. I don't think they're going to win, obviously, but I think they can keep it close, lose 24-17. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the Jets have enough, especially defensively, to keep this one uh, close. I think this projects to be a, a pretty low-scoring game, which plays into, uh, yeah, obviously a, a big underdog that plays into their favor with the 9.5 points. Uh, last year, Dak Prescott had 15 interceptions in 12 games. Last uh, last week, in week one, they didn't really ask him to do a whole lot. Um so, you know, we can't really get too much of a read off that one. But if the Jets are able to create turnovers like they did in week one against the Buffalo Bills, then I think that they have, you know, a chance to really keep this one, uh, keep this one close. The Cowboys, though, you could say the same thing about them. They get after the quarterback and they have a couple of corners and Trayvon Diggs and Stephon Gilmore who uh, are pretty known for for turning the ball over. And with Zach Wilson's, you know, last year, he, he got into funks where he was turning the ball over way too much. I think if they're going to have any sort of success with with Zach Wilson this year. They're going to have to and I guess, you know, maybe it's a good thing that Nathaniel Hackett's here as the OC because he did it in 2017 with Blake Bortles. They're just going to have to really really dumb it down, have it, you know, game manager uh to the fullest extent and just hope that he doesn't make that back-breaking mistake. It's not a great recipe, uh but it's really their only choice in the in the interim short term. We you kind of hit on it. I still think they need to bring in a veteran in here at some point, even just someone you trust more than Tim Boyle who could come in and play if need be. But um, yeah, just for looking at this one in particular, I, I think the Jets defense is just too good. They're going to keep them in games, not necessarily say they're going to win, but I don't know, maybe 19-13 Dallas, something like that, a, a six-point win. If they keep them, you know, you had them at 24. If they keep them under, you know, 24 points-ish, I think they, they should cover this number. Yep. As for our game of the week, we're going to look at the Chiefs and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Chiefs are three and a half points, fav- uh, three and a half point favorites in this one. Who do you like in our game of the week? Yeah, I mean, this should be a good game. They played last year in the divisional round. Jaguars had a chance. They lost by a touchdown um, or something like that. But, uh, I, you know, I don't like that the spread is down to three and a half from two and a half. So he's a big number. Or it was three, I think. But uh, I'm still taking the Chiefs here. Uh, <clears throat> Patrick Mahomes, 81 career games. He's only lost back-to-back games three times, which is remarkable. Uh, 13 and three after a loss, and they're getting back Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones, the second and third best players. Now, last year, last week, they probably would have beat the Lions if Kadarius Tony didn't have those crucial drops. I think the Chiefs get back on back on track here. Um, Jaguars had kind of like an incomplete win last week. Uh, they beat the Colts by 10, but it wasn't it wasn't a blowout at all. They were down and. Uh, I don't know about the Jaguars. I mean, you know, they have talent. I uh, like the Calvin Ridley edition and Trevor Lawrence is solid. But I just don't know if they're as good as people want to make them out to be. And I think uh, I don't see the Chiefs losing back-to-back games here. And Mahomes, this is 28th birthday. Not that that matters too much, but, you know, I think that's a little added wrinkle to it. I just think Kansas City gets back on track. Plus, they had a few extra days. Andy Reid is always one of the best coaches on the, off a of bye week. It's not a true bye week, but they had three extra days of rest. And they're, you know, getting back to their second and third best players. And I just think it shapes up to, uh, Kansas City. You know, we're still, we're, we're still the champs kind of game. You know, they win by a touchdown, uh, 30 to 23, something like that. Yeah. I think Kansas City, uh, same, same as you. I'm going to take them as well. I think this is a perfect, uh, get right spot. And that's not a necessarily a, a knock on Jacksonville, who I think probably and en- probably ends up winning that a- AFC South, but, as you mentioned, they they won in week one, but I didn't think they were, you know, that overly impressive against Indianapolis. The Chiefs just offensively in week one were killed 
by drops. And that wide receiver core obviously has some major, major question marks, but they are getting the best, maybe the best non quarterback on the offensive side of the ball in the league in Travis Kelsey. He's just absolutely unbelievable for them. Uh, and I, I think he makes a huge difference in this game. It's someone that Patrick Mahomes trusts. He obviously does not. Uh, I don't know how you could trust any of the the wide receivers he was throwing to uh, in Week One against Detroit, and they were still, you know, in that game, and they kept that one, uh, you know, I- incredibly close. But this this time, I think is different. As you said, they're the champs for the re- for a reason. I don't see them starting 0 and 2. I think they come back and win this one. I'm going to say by 10, 34, 24. I think they have a pretty nice game uh, to get back into the mix here uh, in Week Two against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, how about a best bet? What's one that really jumps out to you? I know you said you like the Giants a lot, but another well, the Giants one. and the Chiefs are Giants and the Chiefs are my two top picks this week. I don't, I don't like a ton of games. Still early, you know. Still trying to figure out these teams. It's so hard to predict. But uh, I'm gonna go with a team that basically the spread is now it's three. It was two and a half. It's basically to me it's just a pick. I'm just picking them to win because <clears throat> sure they can win by three. But I'm gonna go with the Dolphins. I mean, they were probably one of the most impressive teams in Week One. And I don't think it's an overreaction to say two. Uh, Tagovailoa and um, Tyreek Hill are the best, uh, most exciting uh, quarterback receiver duo in the league. I mean, just amazing. Two of plays lights out, and uh, some of those throws are just amazing. And uh, I'm thinking maybe my Dolphins pick last year during the Super Bowl. Maybe I was a year, a year too early the way they played Week One, but that that's an overreaction. But uh, I, I just think the um, Patriots, you know, they don't want to start the season 0 two at home. But I just don't think they have the offensive firepower to keep up here. Uh, I think the defense will limit limit uh, Miami's offense you know, a little bit, but uh, like a 24-20 kind of game, something like that. I think they cover the number. It'll be close, closer than people think. But, uh, you know, the Patriots, the Patriots had their chance last week against the Eagles. Could have won that game late. It'll be a tight game, but Tua is 4, 4-0 against New England in his career. And uh, I just don't think Miami, um, New England has enough uh, firepower to, keep, to, to win this game. So uh, Miami wins another close one to start 2-0. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I like that pick uh, a lot. I'm not going to use that one in this segment, but I, I agree with you. I think this is a great matchup for Miami, who you know usually, especially early on in the year, tend to play really well uh, against New England. The, the direction that I'm going to go, I'm going to take the Bengals minus three against the Ravens. You hinted at uh, the stat that I had, but a nice little uh, nugget here from Bet Labs. Uh, for, of teams that have lost by 10-plus in week one since 2014, uh, those teams are 39, 22, and one against the spread, and 32 and 30 straight up. And I think this is a perfect, you know, bounce back. I think it was, I think it was better than that, right? Wasn't 32 and 20 or something? Was it? Wasn't it higher than 32 and 30? Sorry, I thought it was no, better than that. No, because only oh. 62, only 62 games is 51.6 percent of the time okay. straight up. Uh, but okay, against sorry. The, no, you're good. Against the spread was definitely uh, where I was looking for on this one. And they're their favorite anyway. But I, I think that, um, you know, th- this offense gets back in gear this week. I think that uh, obviously they just looked absolutely terrible against the Browns. And for whatever reason, the Browns just absolutely uh, destroy the Bengals. It seems like they, they own uh, Joe Burrow right now. But uh, I, I know they started 0-2 last year and then got right, but I don't see him starting 0-2 this year. And the Ravens have some key injuries in this game. Exactly. They're probably going to be without Ronnie Stanley, Tyler Linderbaum, Marlon Humphrey, and Marcus Williams. Like, that's that's four really key guys. They lost J.K. Dobbins last week. Like, that's going to play a really, really big factor in this game. Uh, I, I think that, you know, the Bengals take care of business here. Uh, they win something like... 27 20. I think they, you know, win by a touchdown in this spot for them. Yeah. I, I went back and forth on this. I actually switched to the Bengals for the reason you mentioned the Ravens just have too many injuries. And I agree. I don't think the Bengals want to start 0 2 back to back years. Absolutely. So, how about an underdog? What's one that jumps out? Again, I, not a ton of games I like this week, but I'm going to go with the other team who I think is the, the line is a bit of an overreaction from week one. The uh, Steelers at home Monday night getting two and a half from the Browns. I think the Browns shouldn't be favored by that much. It's an overreaction from you know one game against their, their own Joe Burrow. Steelers got blown out. I was surprised by that. I thought they were gonna. I thought they were gonna beat the Niners. A lot of people. That was a lot of people's upset pick, and they were just totally uh, dominated. But at home, uh, bounce back spot. I like the Steelers a lot here. Uh, you helped me out with a couple of these stats. They've won twenty straight Monday night games at home, which is ridiculous, and they've beaten the Browns nineteen straight games at home. To me, that's enough. I mean, I'm not a huge believer in trends because you know so many things change with roster turnover and coaches and you know weather and who knows all these different uh 
circumstances, but that's hard to ignore. 20 straight home games Monday night, 19 straight home games against the Browns. Steelers looking to avoid 0-2 start. I think they'll be desperate. I don't think the Browns should be favorites. I think the Steelers were a close one, uh, 23-20. Yeah, I like the Steelers a lot uh, this week, too. I think it is a major overreaction, this line, with uh, the Browns being favored. Uh, and I love... Love that Monday night stat. And, you know, we talked about it last week. Mike Tomlin's one of the best coaches. I think he gets his team right back uh, in gear. For me, for my underdog pick, I'm going to go with the Seahawks plus four and a half against Detroit. Not sure if they win this game, but I think it's going to be a really tight back and forth game uh, between these two teams. The Seahawks were embarrassed uh, by the Rams, a division rival in their own building to start the year. You know, they were a, a really big surprise team last year for a lot of people. And Pete Carroll's too good of a coach to let that happen again, where they, you know, they lose another ugly one. So I think they have a they have a chance to win this game. But even if they don't, I think it's a field goal game either way. I think they get the ground going, uh, the ground game going also, which could be uh, a weaker spot on that Detroit defense. Uh, and they do enough to keep this one close. I, th- I think there's too much talent on that Seahawks uh, team to just, you know, completely, you know, roll over here and lose by a touchdown. I don't see it. I think, you know, even it's a it's a road game. I know that's tough um, for for them. And Detroit's a, a really good team, but uh, they, they played them tight last year. I think it happens again uh, in, in 2023. This is actually my pick for the preseason pick for the NFC title game. That's the way Seattle looks. I think that might be a mistake, but. You know, like you said, maybe it's no overreaction, but I'm gonna go with Detroit only because I, I feel like uh, they they had a couple injuries on the offensive line, and I don't like the fact that Matthew Stafford threw for 344 yards with receivers I never heard of. So <laughs> I think Jared Goff will have a big day. So. But like you said, it's the NFL. I mean, when you think nothing's gonna happen in week two, the, the opposite's gonna happen. So you can't predict it. Absolutely, totally fair. So we'll run through these real quick. Both Joe and I are on the Giants minus six. Jets plus nine and a half against the Cowboys and Chiefs in our game of the week minus three and a half against Jacksonville. Best bet, I'm going with the Bengals minus three over the Ravens. Joe is going Dolphins minus three against New England. Underdog pick, Steelers plus two and a half for Joe on Monday Night Football. I'm going with the Seahawks plus four and a half against Detroit. Joe, thank you so much, as always, for joining me. Enjoy the game. Sorry about the (laughs) Aaron (laughs) Rodgers. Thank you.